The sea is emotion incarnate. It loves, hates, and weeps. It defies all attempts to capture it with words and rejects all shackles. No matter what you say about it, there is always that which you can't. The sea, holder of so many secrets, and a particularly intriguing one as we will see in today's story. Well, my dear friends, a particular recent favourite of mine from No Sleep. I hope you're going to enjoy this one as much as I did. I think it's a classic. Well, my dear friends, it's time once again to sit back and relax with your favourite drink and listen. Don't fuck with the ocean, Lottie. That was the first thing my dad's girlfriend, Jeannie, said to me when we went out on the boat for the first time. It's dark and it's cold, and most things that live in there can't be reasoned with. It made sense. Despite her warnings, Jeannie's face was flushed with excitement as she busied herself about the boat. I felt the same reckless joy filling me. I was 17, and this was my third trip on the family boat with Jeannie. Little pockets of happiness between the slow crawl of schoolwork and anxiety. It was one of the first trips I'd gone on since Mom died. I understood why Dad wasn't coming. It had been traumatic for him as well as me. Perhaps more so. He'd only been able to tell me what happened last year. Something about me not being old enough to understand. I could see it when I closed my eyes sometimes. My Dad, as he steered the ship through the worst storm that our little sea town had ever experienced. My mom stood on the bow as she desperately tried to signal for help. She was wearing a life jacket and the little shell necklace that I'd made her when I was younger. She never took it off. I could see my dad's face as she was knocked off the side of the boat and his frantic attempt to turn the boat around. By the time he'd gained control back, she was lost under the roaring waves. The insurance had given us enough to live off but I could still feel my mind stray back to the meandering waves where she still floated. Oh, I just wish that they'd found her. Jeannie was okay. I didn't see the point in ragging on her just because she, she was there. She was funny and young, and she dyed her hair bright purple, and it was good to have a friend. My dad was never the talkative type. Hey, I think we got a find. Jeannie whooped as she reeled the fishing line in. Whoa, this is a big one, heavy. I joined her in pulling. She was right. It took both of our combined strength to drag our find over the side of the boat. It was a life jacket. Oh, God, Jeannie whispered. Oh, it's not the same one. I shook off her comforting hand and picked up the half-rotted jacket. Clearly lettered on the side were the words, Joe Jones. Yes, I told Jeannie quietly. It is. The rest of the ride back was silent. Jeannie occasionally interjected my thoughts with a feeble attempt at conversation. And, although I wasn't angry at her, I didn't have the energy to entertain it. I felt like she died all over again. My dad's face was ashen as I put the life jacket on the table. I didn't want to let it go. It had been the last thing to touch her before she sank down into the depths. We'll bury it, he decided quickly. We'll have our own personal funeral. <sighs> Maybe we should take it to the police, Jack. They might be able to find her at I said we bury it, he snapped. This is a family issue, Jeannie. This isn't anything to do with you. Jeannie's face reddened, as if she'd been slapped. Okay. I could hear the tremble in her voice as she turned and walked out of the room. I love you, Lottie Buck, he whispered. You and me are the only things that matter. I saw Jeannie's face, pursed with the effort of keeping her tears in, and knew this wasn't what I wanted. Can 
I keep the jacket in my room tonight? I whispered. Before we bury it. My father's cold fingers brushed the side of my cheek, and I shivered. I could never say no to you. The words hung in my head like rotted clothes, and I looked at the life jacket that I'd hung up neatly next to my bed. In the feverish darkness, I remembered what my mother looked like when I last saw her, and I wondered what she would look like now, lost fathoms below. My eyes watered as I stared unblinkingly at the neon letters. In the blackness, two legs sprouted from the ragged holes of the material. The skin was pale and milky white, and covered in sea creatures that wriggled in the skin abrasions. I wasn't afraid. I couldn't be. My heart beat in anticipation, my fingers gripping the sheets around me. Arms came next, then the head as it rose from neon like a sunken ship. My mother's hair whipped around her face in the moonlight. Jeannie needs to leave Lodiburg. Her voice was ravaged from the salt of the sea and her blue eyes had been disintegrated but I reached out to her, my heart aching. Why did you have to go? It's Jeannie's turn to go, my mother whispered and turned away. I woke up covered in freezing sweat. Jeannie was at the foot of my bed, a look of childish concern on her face, and for a moment I realized that I'd forgotten how young Jeannie really was. We left the house as my father slept and ran to the sleepy docks to watch the sun rise. I had a dream about my mom last night. I squinted into the sun, looking everywhere except directly at Jeannie. I could hear her sigh. So did I, she told me. She told me to leave. She told me to leave or terrible things would happen to me. I felt a shiver over my sunburnt skin. She said the same thing to me. She didn't say she'd do it, though. I muttered, and looked down as I remembered my father's hard grip on Jeannie's arm. My beat-up converse tapped against the side of the boat. I, I don't want you to go. The words came out so quickly, it sounded like, I don't want you to go. I felt a small hand slide into mine. I don't want to go either, Lottie, Jeannie said quietly. I know it would be silly to go over a dream, but it didn't feel like a dream. Your father's getting sick of me. People give me weird looks when I walk down the street. Yeah, they know I don't belong here. Sometimes I feel like you're the only one who wants me here. Why don't we just fucking leave? You and me. Just... Take the boat and get out of whatever's happening to us here. Jeannie laughed a humorless laugh and touched the side of her bruised neck. I'd barely noticed it behind her sheet of bright hair. I'm sure your dad would find us. For a moment, the dots stayed unconnected. Then, I began to realize that my father was not a good man. A creeping realization that made me suddenly nauseous. He loves you, Lottie, more than anything. I thought about my father, small but stocky, prone to bouts of shouting. I thought about how I'd never been comfortable around him, not really, and had never known why. I wish he didn't. I looked at the life jacket as I lay in bed. It felt like it was humming, a weird, low, vibrational melody that sounded almost soothing. I'm sorry, I told it. I'm sorry you died. The humming intensified, but I wasn't afraid. I remembered my mum, her breezy smile, her ability to see everything in a positive light. I can't remember crying when she died, just a numb, aching shock. But I cried then. Hot tears streamed down my cheeks. I fell asleep like that, 
my wet face nestled into my pillow. And then I dreamed. My mom sat on my bed. She looked exactly as she had done the night she died. Her blue jeans scratched against my bed covers as she kissed me on the forehead. I love you, Lottie Buck, she whispered. And I'm sorry, too. Then the world turned on its head. I felt like I was being thrown through the air at a thousand miles an hour. I felt my face, wet but stinging as if the ocean spray had just dashed against it. I was on the boat in the middle of a terrible storm. I looked down. The words Joe Jones glowed on my life jacket. I gasped for air as water sluiced down on me. It felt like I couldn't breathe. My father was at the helm, but the look in his eyes sent a shiver of fear down my spine. I'm sorry, Joe, he told me over the wind, howling but tame. She'll be better off this way. She needs her father. The memory of a thousand debts raced through my mind. A thousand arguments over paperwork and my father's late nights out where he'd come home empty-handed. I remembered screaming at him on the boat, where we'd gone to talk away from prying ears. I remembered the cold grip of his hands around my throat, the familiar feeling of helplessness that came every time he hurt me. This is what happened, I remembered, when I tried to leave. I could feel the throat that wasn't mine try and form a response, but my father's hands twisted at my neck, sending me reeling to the side and knocking me off balance as I tumbled down, 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 into the darkness. I woke up, gasping, spitting out seawater. Something was sitting on the end of my bed. It was something rotted and stinking, and somehow achingly familiar. It spoke in a voice that sounded like creaking wood. She was right. He'll always find you. I'm gonna kill him now. It paused, as if it was waiting for me to ask it not to. I bowed my head, as if in prayer, until the thing that had been my mother slunk off to my father's room. Then, there was only silence. Eight months later, Jeannie and I sailed across a choppy sea. That morning, we'd received the news that my dad's death was ruled accidental. A cocktail of medication and alcohol, giving him a sudden fatal heart attack. And my 18th birthday had come. I could go wherever I wanted. The coast lined the skyline and the sunlight glinted off the water. I looked at her smile. Her hair swept back into a bun, and I remembered my mom. I know, it's stupid, but even now I can feel her holding my hand when I see the ripples of the tide come in as the sun sets over the trees, casting shadows over the boat. Jeannie was right. We don't fuck with the ocean. It's dark and cold, and most things in it can't be reasoned with. Most things. Wow, 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 how good was that? Definitely one of my favourites from uh, recent times over at No Sleep. Like I said recently, I've been doing um, a lot of stuff from Dr. Creepin's Vault, my own subreddit. And, you know, to the uh, neglect of some great stories on No Sleep. So I'm glad to get back there and do some really good stuff. Uh, comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to uh, reply to as many as I can. But I'm trying to do a story a day over six days. As you may well know if you visit Dr. Creepin's Vault regularly. <laughs> Well enough for one night, but of course I will be back again tomorrow with another story. <gasps> oh yes indeed. But for now, sweet dreams and bye bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?